There's a distinct theme running through the lectionary readings for today. That theme is forgiveness. In the Genesis reading, Joseph forgives his brothers despite them selling him to the Egyptians as a slave. In his letter to the Romans, Paul is reminding us that we are all equally accountable to God and should not judge one another, but stand before God, trusting in his mercy and judgment. And in the reading from Matthew's Gospel, Jesus tells us a parable about an unforgiving servant to answer Peter's question about how many times we should forgive our siblings in Christ. Forgiveness can be hard to give. When one of my children was around four or five years old, they found a biro pen and drew on our recently purchased leather sofa and chairs. I was perhaps understandably cross and angry that they had done this. The chairs were going to need careful cleaning and possibly reupholstering. The nice afternoon that I had planned for my child was put on hold whilst I used the special fluid supplied by the manufacturers for such an eventuality, whilst he was left to think about his actions and no television. When my husband returned home that evening, my child told his dad the sorry tale, which included the line, but I said I was sorry, so why is it not okay? Why is mummy still cross? A sharp lesson perhaps that saying sorry had to be accompanied by forgiveness. And it's a human reaction that when we are wronged, when someone sins against us, we demand justice and punishment for the offender. A whole judicial system is set up to punish wrongdoers. My own instinct in dealing with the misdemeanor of my child was to punish him by not taking him out and not allowing the television to be put on. Just to put your mind at rest, we all forgave each other later on. The crime of my son drawing on the new chairs was a relatively minor offence, forgiven by being excusable. Having recently learnt to write, he was keen to practise his newly acquired skill, not appreciating the thoughtlessness of his chosen canvas. However, the idea of forgiving some other crimes can seem insurmountable. The pain and loss felt as a result of the torture, abuse or murder of a loved one can become all-consuming. Our human instinct is to demand judgment and revenge and the concept of forgiveness can be far from our thoughts. And yet, part of our Lord's prayer, the prayer that Jesus himself taught us, is that we are forgiven our sins or trespasses and that we forgive those who sin or trespass against us. Similarly, in the Apostles' Creed, we say, we believe in the forgiveness of sins. So it would therefore appear that the idea of forgiveness is at the heart of our Christian faith. It is the root of our prayers and our beliefs. It is what we are called by God to do seek forgiveness for our sins and in return, forgive others theirs. In our gospel reading today, Peter asks Jesus the question, how many times should I forgive? Peter accepts that forgiveness is necessary. He's not asking whether he should forgive at all, but how many times he should forgive a sinner. In other words, what are the limits of forgiveness? There was a tradition in Jewish law from the book of Amos that God requires us to forgive three times. So Peter, when in the follow-up to his question, suggests that we forgive not three times, but seven times, twice the original number plus an extra one. He's probably feeling pretty pleased with himself that he has picked an outrageously large number. Furthermore, seven was seen as a number that had completeness and perfection. So Peter must have been feeling like at last he's got it right. But Jesus' reply, not seven times, but I tell you 77 times, or even as some translations put it, 70 times seven times, not only knocked Peter's suggestion out of the park, 
that suggests a number that would be hard to keep track of. The inference being that we should not keep score of how much we forgive. God's forgiveness is limitless, infinite. It knows no bounds, and likewise our forgiveness should be immeasurable and boundless. Jesus then goes on to tell a parable to illustrate the point further. The parable starts with a king who is owed 10,000 talents by one of his servants. A talent was a weight of measurement, and a single talent, we are told, was worth more than 15 years of wages of a labourer. So the debt was 10,000 times 15 years, or 150,000 years of wages. It was as large a sum of money as could be imagined. The servant would never ever be able to repay it. It was an impossible debt. Jesus has used the biggest numbers and the biggest currency amount to drive home the absolute impossibility of this man having any chance of fixing what he has done. The servant cannot repay, repay the debt. I think that's sometimes a point we miss in this parable, that it was an impossible debt. But the master, out of his own compassion, forgave the debt and released the servant from his slavery. The servant does not ask to be forgiven, but rather asks for more time. Have patience with me and I will pay you everything, he says. But the master forgave him all the same, through his own compassion. He released the servant and forgave him the debt. He didn't have to, but the forgiving nature of the master completely set the servant free. The freedman then encounters one of his own slaves who owes him 100 denarii. The denarius was approximately one day's pay for a labourer, so this debt, 100 days wages, it's not insignificant, but compared to the previous sum of money, is a payable debt. The forgiven servant whose master had forgiven him an unimaginably large amount refuses to forgive his own servant this smaller amount. Upon hearing that the forgiven servant did not forgive the debt of another, the first master revokes his forgiveness and hands the servant over to be tortured. Jesus concludes that his heavenly father will do this to every one of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Forgiving from our heart. And not just forgiving the easy things to forgive, the things we can excuse, like the case of my son drawing on the chairs. But we are also called to forgive the difficult things, the inexcusable behaviours. And it may require a complete change of attitude towards the one who has done the wrong. But without us forgiving others, we cannot receive our own forgiveness from God for the multitude of sins we commit every day. There is a consequence for not forgiving, and that is separation from God. And not only are we to do this, but we are to do it without limit. God forgives us infinitely and we are to do the same strikes me that this is at the very core of our Christian faith because this is what love is to forgive and to be forgiven unconditionally and infinitely.